Webtoon Rant, and today we've got the Webtoon Villain to Kill. Villain to Kill is a webtoon of the dark hero, uh, uh, dark hero genre. Basically, it's it's a very kind of almost typical but still done well version of the typical, oh, there are superpowers in this world, there are villains who are the bad guys and heroes who are the good guys, and they fight each other. However, the heroes seem to be kind of corrupt, and the villains don't seem to be as corrupt as they seem, or as evil as they seem, or is described to the public. And, and we go, we kind of go into the main character who finds out about this, oh, wait, the, the heroes might not be the heroes, and kind of get, goes into that conflict and tries to kind of be good, essentially. The, the, um, the plot basically revolves around Cassian, who is this guy. And essentially, he's a psyker, who is, which is another term for hero within this world. And essentially, he gets backstabbed by fellow heroes because of some kind of artifact. Um, and basically, uh, uh, an older hero that he knows from way, way back, um, he found this artifact thing that's supposed to be a secret that the heroes don't want, the psychers or whatever, the psychers don't really want the public to know about and the villains, other people to know about. So they got kind of exterminated so that information wouldn't leak out, I think, pretty much. And that artifact, and we don't know what it is, we don't know what the artifact is, and he gets killed. But then he reawakens in the body of this young kid who has the potential to be a, become a catastrophic superhuman ability user supervillain, essentially. However, he kind of harnesses those powers in order to do good things, and he starts to make his own villain group, and, well, we say villain, but it's really just a group of superhumans, and try to try to find out what the artifact is, and that's the basic plot of the thing. And it's already a pretty intriguing plot, but what really adds on to this webtoon, I believe, is a couple things. The first thing I want to mention is freaking character design. It looks amazing, right? So look at this, look at this stuff. Okay, okay, pretty cool goggle, right? And then we, we get that zoom in shot. And it's just, okay, look, it's a simple design. It isn't over the top or anything, but it's, it's, so, it's so much better than a lot of the superhero designs that we see recently, which is just, oh, it's a guy in a tight suit. Awesome! He's a dynasty tight suit. He's a oh he's he's got a, a an armor, a metal power suit. Like I've seen that thing a thousand, thousand million times. Oh, it's just another wannabe Iron Man. Oh, it's another wannabe freaking Spider Man, you know? Like everyone in this tight suit oh, it's another wannabe freaking Superman. Like everyone's in a tight suit or just with a cape or or it, it, it's it's just a tight suit that looks like there's scales on it. And but Stuff like this I really love because it's really dynamic, the colors really pop, the yellow and the purple really pop against each other, there's several layers to it, there's complex little bits to it, it's different, right? It isn't just a typical, oh, we, he's, he's a villain, so he's got um, a, a suit. Like, that's boring, and, but like, a unique weapon, a unique look, and, and this really lovely color scheme with, with dynamic and colorful design that really pops against each other. It, it makes for that really cool, like, ooh, that, this character's meant to be cool, isn't he? And it really tells the reader that, not through the actual character dialogue or anything like that, but through just the drawing, and it's really, really good to see. The second scene, of course, of course I gotta mention this, is the abilities and the execution of, the, of these abilities and the fight scenes. So if you just look at, I'm gonna, we're gonna look at two examples. One is a simple, very short fight sequence, and another is a longer, but very complex fight sequence, right? So, look at this. Yo, okay, okay. He attacks. Driver gets ready. He swings. Perfect execution, but it's a dummy. And driver's mad, right? So, the thing is, um, if we look at this, it just looks, it looks just clean. Like, there's nothing extra, but it looks really good, even though it's a really simple scene. It's, a, it's just a simple scene that's executed really, really, really well. It, it looks pretty good, and it, it's very, very good, right? And and then we get complex fight scenes. This is uh, this is a scene with Cassian, the main character. So, homing skewer. Do you guys see this? Look at that. Look at that lighting. But like, whew, look at these fights, right? 
Look, okay. One thing I really want to appreciate is this is this these just cuts of just pure action where where the character isn't like thinking all the time. There's this thing with anime and a lot of webtoons where they have thought like monologue of oh oh that person is gonna attack like this within their head every single freaking frame. And I'm fine with inner monologue doing that because I mean if if it fits the character if it's a character that thinks a lot like Midori Izuku from let's say My Hero Academia that's a popular example of a character that thinks a lot while fighting. Like, I understand, you need to have a lot of character dialogue. That doesn't mean that in every single cut of the fight, you need to have some kind of, oh, oh, he's strong. Oh, he's, he's, he's too powerful. I need to use my secret move. Like, Katya? Nah, he doesn't give a shit, man. He's just moving. He's using his moves. He's countering. Like, it looks good. It feels good. And it really flows. There's no dialogue to break up this beautiful sequence of fighting. And it's really, really cool. It's really, really good to see. And a lot of the action sequences are like this. And that's why it makes, that's really adds on to the webtoon. Really solid character design, really cool abilities, and really good drawing abilities. And, and of course, like I said, the fight scenes all really add on to this pretty decent concept of the heroes and villains thing that just makes everyone's heart speed. Because who doesn't like a classic superhero tale, right? And it's, it, it's just really, really cool. And I really respect people who, who have come up with this with this not super typical but still a just a new version of something that of a very well established genre but still really pull through because their work is just objectively really 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 cool and i think it really it really shows the effort really shows and i think it's very very cool so i would rank this around a b tier and it has a chance to go to a tier if there's a little bit more character development with cassian because I think, yeah, if there's more character development with Cassian and it really kind of develops the character more and he kind of, he, and more relationships with the other characters. Like, for example, Cassian has, um, he's, he's kind of like reincarnated into this little guy's body, right? But this guy's, guy's sister is like, you know, doesn't know that he's gone into Cassian. Cassian has taken over her little brother's body, right? So, so like, I want, I would like to explore that kind of, like, what's going to go on with the sister, like, what's going to happen, are they going to find out, that conflict that ensues, character development. If we have those really complex lines of thinking and, and really add on, and also if the twist, like, the plot and what the artifact is, is really impressive, this is a webtoon that can easily go to A tier. However, for now, it is a solid, solid high B tier, even B plus tier, I would even say. And it is an excellent, excellent webtoon. If you're craving some superhero action, but you don't, you're sick of Marvel, DC, and you're sick of watching the boys spewing blood everywhere, and you still want corrupt superheroes, welcome to Villain to Kill. Have a great day, everybody. B tier.